The world of TV is so relentlessly fast-paced that the cast and crew often barely have time to breathe, let alone squabble over their character's creative direction moving forward. But if an actor is in a position to call out something that rubs them the wrong way or they feel could be harmful for the show's future, then it's certainly smart to pipe up. And that's precisely what these 10 actors did. So with that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 TV storylines actors refuse to do. Number 10. Saul Becomes a Murderer, Better Call Saul Though Saul Goodman has been responsible for his fair share of death across both Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad, he never directly killed anyone with his own bare hands. But that almost happened in the show's sixth and final season, when Gene's true identity is found out by Marion, an elderly woman who befriended him. And when Saul realises this, Marion attempts to call the police, prompting him to rip the phone cord out and threaten her. The situation is only diffused when Marion activates her life alert alarm, forcing Saul to flee the scene. However, according to Bob Odenkirk himself, writer Vince Gilligan originally had Saul indeed kill Marion at the end of the scene. But Odenkirk, affronted by the idea of murdering a screen legend of Carol Burnett's calibre, fault and jokingly claimed that he even planned to walk if Gilligan didn't change his mind. Which evidently he did. Number 9. Davos Crushes on Missande, Game of Thrones Though Game of Thrones cast members ultimately didn't have much say in dictating the direction of the show's underwhelming final season, actor Liam Cunningham, who played fan favourite Sir Davos Seaworth, pushed back hard against one of the proposed plots for his character. It was originally intended for Davos to develop romantic feelings for Daenerys Targaryen's friend and confidant, Missandei. Cunningham flat out told the show's creators, I'm not effing doing it. Feeling that beyond the near three decade age gap between the two actors, it made no sense for Davos to be pining after younger women given the paternal relationship he showed towards several notable young female characters in the series. Between all of that and Davos having a wife and children in Westeros, something that the show conveniently forgot in later seasons, it's safe to say that Cunningham was 100% right to veto this icky subplot, which would have just given fans yet another thing to complain about. Number 8. Elaine Buys a Gun, Seinfeld Seinfeld had its fair share of provocative plotlines over the years, but one which was nixed during the rehearsal process was Elaine buying a gun. The season 2 episode in question, tentatively titled The Bet, would have seen the gang bet on whether or not Elaine would buy herself a gun for protection. Most daringly, it was also set to feature a sequence where Elaine points a gun at her head and her stomach while referring to John F. Kennedy and William McKinley, two presidents who were assassinated by being shot in those respective areas. Staff writer Larry Charles said the the episode was intended to probe the uptick in women buying guns in America in the late 1980s and early 1990s. However, upon reading the script during rehearsals, Julia Louis-Dreyfus refused to film it at all. A sentiment backed up by her fellow cast members and even the episode's intended director said, Guns are not funny, no matter what you say. Number 7. Charlie comes back from the dead and then dies for real, two and a half men. Charlie Sheen was fired from hit sitcom Two and a Half Men at the end of its eighth season, at which point his protagonist Charlie Harper was replaced with a new lead. The ninth season's first episode revealed that Charlie was killed in a Paris subway accident, but it heavily implied that he was actually murdered by his obsessive stalker, Rose. When the show finally wrapped up with its twelfth season a few years later, there was intense speculation about whether or not Sheen would return to bury the hatchet with the show's creator, Chuck Law. And as it turned out, Sheen was indeed invited back to reprise the role of Charlie, in a plot which would have seen him reveal that he was actually still alive. He'd then deliver a meta rant about his drug use and a apparent invincibility before being killed off for real by a falling piano. Sheen wasn't interested in Law's idea for Charlie's return and swift re-exit, suggesting instead that his comeback be more heartwarming and provide a setup for a spin-off series. But Law was committed to his original idea and so the scene was instead shot with a stand-in, minus the planned rant. Sheen wasn't at all happy that Law still went through with the basic idea despite him rejecting it, calling Law immature and unevolved. The series' final moments certainly proved divisive with fans, many of whom decried Law for allowing his personal spat with Sheen to define the show's ending. Number 6. Jim Kisses Kathy, The Office 
In the eighth season of The Office, a temp worker joins Dunder Mifflin's office to cover Pam's maternity leave, an attractive young woman named Kathy Sims, who quickly develops quite the romantic interest in Jim, despite knowing he's married with children. Though Kathy's attempts to seduce Jim are ultimately firmly rebuffed, creator Greg Daniels initially planned for the pair to share a kiss while away on a work trip in Florida. The prospect disgusted John Krasinski enough that he even went as far as to refuse to shoot the scene outright feeling passionately that having Jim cheat would risk obliterating the audience's investment in his and Pam's relationship altogether. In the book Welcome to Dunder Mifflin, The Ultimate Oral History of The Office, he said, My feeling is there is a threshold with which you can push our audience. They are so dedicated, and we have shown such great respect to them, but there's a moment where if you push them too far, they'll never come back. And I think that if you show Jim cheating, they'll never come back. And once again, the actor was right. Having Jim kiss Kathy would have been a devastating wholly unnecessary betrayal of both Pam and the audience who'd spent eight years watching the pair. Number 5. Raven Comes Out, Raven's Home that So Raven spin-off series Raven's Home, of course, brought Raven Simone back to portray protagonist Raven Baxter. But before the first season began filming, Disney proposed a change in Raven's character which she wasn't too thrilled about. Raven Simone, who is gay in real life, said that Disney wanted to make her character also gay in the revival, something the actress was firmly against and ultimately vetoed. The reasons for this are complex, with Raven Simone evidently being wary of the Raven character being conflated with who she is as a human being. She said, The reason I said no wasn't because I wasn't proud of who I was or I didn't want to represent the LGBTQ plus community in any way. It was because Raven Baxter is Raven Baxter is Raven Baxter. And Raven Baxter is a character that I was proud to play, even if she is straight, cisgender, I don't mind. Let her have her moment. If you ever see me in another character, you see Raven Baxter, and that's just what the deal is. And I think the one thing that differentiates me from her is now a lot more. You know what? That's totally fair enough. Much as it would have been easy for her to use this opportunity to bring some strong LGBTQ plus representation to a popular brand, it was personally important for her to draw a line between Raven the character and Raven the real life person. Number 4. The Doctor Teams Up With J.K. Rowling, Doctor Who Per its fantastical nature, Doctor Who is capable of getting away with a lot. And though everybody's favourite Doctor, David Tennant, certainly seems like he's up for anything, even he felt that showrunner Russell T Davis' most fan-serving idea was just a bit too much. At one point, Davis extended an invitation to Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling to write an episode of the series, but when she declined due to her ongoing commitments writing the Harry Potter books, Davis had another idea, giving her a role in an episode. In 2008, Davis came up with the idea for a Christmas special in which Tennant's Doctor would have to fight his way through witches and wizards in order to reach Rowling, whose written ideas have started to become reality. But David Tennant wasn't a fan of the idea, feeling that it would be less a fun crossover than an outright spoof. And in Davis's own words, we've got to keep him happy. So the Who Potter team up was thrown in the bin. For more Doctor Who news and tidbits, then make sure that you head over to our sister channel Who Culture, where we are keeping you up to date with the latest and greatest in the Hooniverse. Number 3. Kato loses a fight to Robin, the Green Hornet the 1960s TV adaptation of The Green Hornet had a few fun crossover events with the 60s Adam West starring Batman series, which reached a fascinating head when The Green Hornet and Kato showed up in two episodes of Batman's second season. The duo were in Gotham City to take down a counterfeit stamp ring when they crossed paths with Batman and Robin, leading to a chaotic fight scene in which the quartet both teamed up with and then battled each other. Originally, Robin was scripted to defeat Kato in one-on-one -on -one combat Combat, but Bruce Lee, a world-class martial artist, refused to film Kato losing, quite rightly feeling that audiences simply wouldn't buy him getting hosed by the boy wonder after seeing him kick so much righteous ass on his own show. And so a compromise was met. The fight would end as a tie, even if it's clear to anyone with even barely functioning eyeballs that Kato was about to flatten Robin with those educated feet of his. Number 2. Chandler Cheats on Monica, Friends much has been written about Matthew Perry's iconic performance as Chandler Bing on Friends following his tragic recent passing. And perhaps the most surprising story to emerge is that Perry had to intervene and stop the writers proceeding with a cheating storyline. In the season 5 episode The One in Vegas Part 1, Chandler was originally written to cheat on Monica with a hotel worker after the pair argued about Monica having lunch with her former lover Richard. According to actress Lisa Cash, who was set to play the hotel worker in question, the scene 
got far enough that she and Perry had fully rehearsed it, a sequence where she delivers room service to him and they end up sleeping together. But the day before the scene was set to be shot in front of a live studio audience, Perry went to the writers and declared he wouldn't film it, that the audience would never forgive Chandler for being unfaithful. And so the scene was tossed out, with Cash instead being recast as a flight attendant for a scene with David Schwimmer and Jennifer Aniston instead. Number 1. Jill Dies, Home Improvement Beloved sitcom Home Improvement came to an end with its eighth season after Patricia Richardson, who played the wife of protagonist Tim Taylor, decided that she'd devoted enough years of her career to the show. Network ABC didn't simply take no for an answer though, offering Richardson an eye-watering $25 million to return, but she held firm and refused. According to Richardson herself, ABC was so desperate to keep the show going though that they then turned to Tim Allen and proposed a ninth season in which Tim was forced to cope with his wife death. Allen was reportedly offered as much as $50 million for season 9, yet he sensibly knew when enough was enough, and given that his and Richardson's chemistry formed the show's very foundation, it would have been disastrous to continue without her. And that concludes our list, let us know your thoughts in the comments down below, and while you're there don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day and I'll see you real soon.